Okay, I'm back finally after a two week absence or more. I'm here to talk about a uh, fellow YouTuber who, quite frankly, I like some of the time. But he recently put up two videos that I've just got problems with. I'm going to first talk about his amazing Spider Man re review. He he talks about uh, a lot of the CGI working, which I agree with. Okay, um, and he says the best part of the movie is him swinging around, Spider Man swinging around. Yeah, it was pretty good. I didn't. I don't really go for that sort of thing. But if if that's what did it for you, that's okay with me. The real, the romance not working all right um this is something a fel another fellow youtuber commented on there was better chemistry between these two than there was between Kirsten Dunst and Tobey Maguire Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone had way better chemistry I'm sorry to say this to you Sam but it's true I uh, and you talking about them just wanting to suck a face, well, hey, guess what, they're teenagers. And that didn't really bother me, and I don't think it was shallow. And you just talk about them not going on a date. Well, I throw, put this to you. They did the meet the parents thing. And yeah, that wasn't the same, that's not the same thing, but uh, to me that at least works a bit. At least they did something uh, that two people who are dating would normally do. And I don't really think a lot of people actually go out on dates anymore. And I didn't really need a scene with the two of them sitting down at a dining room table or going to a cinema or something like that or them having a conversation out of coming out of a cinema. It would have slowed the pace of the movie down a little bit too much, in my opinion. And uh, that's not a scene I really needed. Um, a scene I actually did need was uh, there was one of the lead scenes. Now, I know in your review you said, hey, this scene's not in the movie, so therefore it's not in the movie. Well, with that, I agree with you. There was a lot taken out, and I don't blame the director. I don't blame the cast. I blame the studio. And yeah, that 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 did hurt the movie a great a great deal. This it did have a lot of potential, and unfortunately, that was whittled down to making it probably the third, where it could have been equal second uh, best comic book movie of the year. Uh, and no, I didn't see every comic book uh, movie this year. I did see Avengers, and I did see Dark Knight Rises, but and I did see the Amazing Spider-Man, and they were all pretty much came out at different times in the US or the UK. So, yeah. I don't think that it was the best movie of the year, but I do think that it was definitely uh, the third, be third best movie I saw this year. I think it was better than Wreck-It Ralph, but I only saw that just towards the end of last year, I think. Or the beginning of this year, but uh, okay. Anyway, you talk. Uh, I know you talk at length in your review, Sam, about the inconsistencies in the character of Peter Parker. This is a problem I have with. I have a problem with you saying that, as well as something else. It. Uh, it does work because they're they're different scenes. They're showing off different aspects of the character. Now, without getting into the uh, the scene with the basketball, okay, uh, you pointed this. This is you pointed out a, a few. So uh, that's the one. The one. The ones I remember. The you said you didn't like that scene. Well, I don't know if you've been bullied, but. <laughs> 
I have. Um, so I could kind of understand the character in that scene. And I could understand Flash in that scene as well. Uh, and as well as the accompanying scene that came later that did show some depth to that character outside of the... I think, I'm pretty sure he was in Raimi movies, that character, but at least in one scene. I think he's one that he's in that scene. So, yeah, that to me worked. Uh, the romance, yes, it worked. Um, and the, the scene where he's having problems with his aunt, I could understand that. He's trying to protect her, um, and he's not sure of what her opinions of Spider-Man are, so, and, but he knows that she's worried about him, and he knows that maybe she, at, at the end, I think, even that they suspect something is go, going on there. So, there is, there is plenty of story here, it's just, some of it got cut out, and that's unfortunate. I think this is a good movie that had an opportunity to be great, and unfortunately it wasn't, but it still works. It still works as a standalone movie. It, unlike what you said, which it doesn't, it does. It works, it has a better origin than the Raimi movies. It works, it worked a whole hell of a lot better for me. I had an emotional investment in the Peter Parker, Uncle Ben relationship this time. And this is coming from someone that has never actually read a Spider-Man comic. Okay. Those are my thoughts on your review of The Amazing Spider-Man. Bored to come. Okay, part two. The Trekkers gonna Trekker. Now, I'm not gonna be uh, the first one to do a video response to this video, unfortunately, but pretty much everything that superhero enthusiasts had to say about this, I'm gonna say, probably be repeating a bunch of stuff he said. Well,. I myself have not seen every single episode of the original series, but I'm pretty sure I've seen the, all the best episodes. I have seen the, oh god, uh, City on the Edge of Forever, Balance of Terror, and Let This Be Our Last Battlefield. I've seen them. So, and I've managed to watch them all the way through, because there was great characters in all of them. Their acting was spot on, uh, and I know it's a little bit slower paced, and the graphics probably aren't as good, but you're, from my understanding, Sam, you are a Doctor Who fan, so you're probably kind of used to that. <sighs> but, again, I can't see how you can dis... The Amazing Spider-Man, and like this, I don't, I don't see that. Uh, uh, admittedly, I'm not, not saying that. I just don't understand. It. Okay, let's agree to disagree on that point. The first ten minutes of Star Trek 2009 were the only, was the only character moment that I could actually enjoy. I sat there in my theater seat like this and I was enjoying that. I was enjoying that moment. I thought that this is great. This is going to be what the whole rest of the movie is going to be like. And then I got disappointed. It, start, it, start, it started pretty early on. I, I watched uh, I watched as it, it took this steep fall off a cliff right away. And the final straw was the destruction of Vulcan, because I knew after that there was no coming back. There was no way that this movie was going to save, save anything for me. I was like, oh god, what have they done? What have they done? And there's no... 
I can't find, I can't remember because I can't, wa I literally cannot watch that movie again. I have tried. I've legitimately tried to watch that movie again. I've thought, okay, my, maybe I prejudged the movie. Maybe I need to watch it again. And I have tried. I really, I have tried, but I can't get into it. You say you're a fan of the next generation. Well, that movie, uh, that movie is nowhere near the next generation. That movie is nowhere near Deep Space Nine. That movie is nowhere near Voyager. That movie is hell, nowhere near Enterprise. And as bad as that show was, that movie is nowhere near. It is even nowhere near Nemesis. It's nowhere near Insurrection. It's nowhere near any of them. At least I can say, well, as bad as those movies and some of the and the Enterprise and Voyager, in, to some degree, even though that's what got me into Trek. At least I know that. Well, I can tell that these play, these take place in the same universe. That is awful. Now I pray I'll 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 give this that movie its props for its special effects, but hell no. And you say, well, it's got to appeal to a wider audience. Was there character moments in The Dark Knight? Yeah. And how much money did that movie make? Great deal. Now you could do a movie, a Star Trek movie like The Dark Knight. Dealing with issues of, let's say, uh, okay, well, uh, that movie was about s uh, some guy going around causing chaos. Well, you can do, you, you can have a character like that in the movie, similar, and you can have the two warring factions, two alien races go uh, on the brink of war, and this guy uh, that. Uh, one side hires to cause chaos for the other side, and then turns on that the other side. You, see, you can you can do that. You could do a very similar tone of movie, in a very similar story, in the in the Trek universe. Uh, I think you can do a movie like Aven uh, similar to Avengers, a similar story, not the same, but similar. But uh, J.J. Abrams decided, well, well, we'll put all the character stuff off in, in the first ten minutes of the movie. And then F the rest. Now, I'm going to put a whole heap of the stuff that I referenced all in a list. Full Killers review of the, uh, the comparison review. The... And... The trailer review and the review itself from Barry Dan 12 of the Star Trek movie. And I must point out that that review was done straight after the movie came out. And recently there was a mention of that in the podcast. And I would like to also say JJ about the J.J. Abrams being appointed to do the next Star Wars movie. I have all the confidence in the world in J.J. Abrams doing a Star Wars movie. Because he already did one. He just called it Star Trek. And thank you Scotty Lorenz from Barry Dan 12 for pointing that fact out. Thank you for listening.